Hi, my friends. Welcome to today's episode of Fourth Day Catholic. I'm so glad that you found us. Father Anthony and I have a great episode for you today. He even did some show prep, so you know it's going to be a good one. I hope that you guys enjoy it. If you do, please hit subscribe wherever you are watching or listening. Thanks. Fortnite Catholic. I am Taylor Schroll. That is Father Anthony Scaramucci Sharapa. My voice is almost back. It's been a week where I haven't had my voice. It's been strange. Yeah, and and you have a face. I do have a face. That's you're not all, new. You're all clean shaven. I, I, yeah, I am clean shaven. That is new, but my face is not new. Uh, it looks new to me. It looks brand new. You're, you're welcome. You look like a brand new sparkly baby. Thank you. Dude, my what? mom, who's arriving here shortly, always yeah. tries tells everybody w- with the story of how I was born, how large my head was, and she uses that as a like, oh, I'm so great or whatever. Could you imagine yeah. me uh, me being a baby right now? That would suck. That would be that'd be terrible. <laughs> that'd be terrible. <laughs> We're gonna do a C-section, I think. <laughs> Probably. Uh, can you do some liposuction on the baby during the <laughs> C-section? <laughs> um, this is actually a perfect segue into how I wanted to start the show. Oh, yeah? And it might give it away now, but it was going to be a great joke. I had a, re- a revelation the other day while I was driving in my car. Um, I was listening to a, a, a non-Catholic podcast, I was listening to a sports podcast, and something uh-huh. they said made me realize something. I'm the biggest Catholic podcaster in the world. The biggest Catholic podcaster in the world. I am. It's me, Taylor Schroll, the biggest Catholic podcaster in the world. Uh, how how do you figure that? I want you to guess. What do you think I mean? I mean, uh, you are you're you're pretty tall. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure there are Catholic podcasts that have more a bigger audience than you. So I don't think it's one that. or two. One or two, yeah. Yeah. Um, is it, it, did they, I, I don't know. Is it because you're very tall and big? I I think uh, you're going the safe route. You went, you know, what most people would think was like, he's, he's saying he's the most popular. Clearly not the most popular. Not even yeah, close. Yeah, no. Um, there's a couple other podcasters that are tall. Yeah, there is. Uh, how many po- Catholic podcasters do you know that weigh 280 pounds? I, th- I think I'm it. I think you I'm the biggest Catholic podcaster in the world. <laughs> you might be the biggest. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, um, I don't know what the what the Catching Foxes guys. Wait, how much they oh, weigh? No, there's no there's no way they're close. I, I, I was big before I was fat. I went <laughs> two twenty five at six percent body fat. Like be- best shape of my life. Had a six pack. Weighed two twenty five. So people were like, "Oh, Taylor, yeah, you know, they hear me say that I need to lose weight." And they think that I mean, like, get down to them, which is like 150 pounds. The skinniest I can be is like 225. (laughs) That's all this body allows. You've got to be it. Yeah. You've convinced me. The biggest Catholic podcaster. So I think, you know, that that took a while to explain. I think I'm just going to put it in my Twitter bio and not explain it. (laughs) I I agree. The world's biggest Catholic podcaster. I, I'm it. You're welcome. Uh, you, so yeah. you are you are on the pot. We joke all the time that every co-host on the show is more popular than me and always has been. Mm-hmm. Uh, not one bigger than me. <laughs> not one bigger than you. That's true. <laughs> um, so that was the revelation I had about myself. Uh-huh. I have been feeling like I've been spending a lot of time with you over the last uh, week and a half, two weeks, even though. We haven't talked that much. We had a nice little text conversation that was very fun that won't make it onto yes. the show. Um, yeah. But I've been spending a lot of time with you by proxy. Okay. I've been watching this documentary from about 20 years ago called The Sopranos. Have you ever heard of it? Oh. <laughs> I am aware of it, yes. <laughs> Have you, so I just started. I'm like a, a little bit over halfway done with season one. I'm really mm-hmm. enjoying it. It's not what I thought it was going to be. Like... Like, I, I know that it's about the Italian mob, right? But right. two of the things that I didn't know was I didn't know that it wasn't like the heyday. It's like past the heyday. Like, it's like 
they're trying to have to go legit because they're all getting put in jail. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's <laughs> towards the end of like the the mafia time, right? Yeah. Um, also, I didn't realize that like mental health played such a huge role in the show. Oh, like, okay. like the whole thing is like he's going to a counselor the whole time, which is super <laughs> weird. Like, uh, like I don't put mob boss and counseling together all that often. Yeah. No. That's, um, yeah. So have you ever seen it? Like, it's like super old. Have you seen it? You, like, what do you know about this? Show? I've never watched it. Um, I've seen like clips here and there. Um, that's it. Like, I'm just vaguely aware that it exists and people really liked it. Yeah. So I, I've been essentially every big HBO Sunday night show, like since Game of Thrones, I've watched. So like Game of Thrones Succession's on right now. Barry's ending right now. So like I'm either done with or I'm caught up with all the like the big HBO Sunday night, you know, like that, that that's like the prime time. Like a lot of the best shows in ever ha- have happened yeah. in that time slot. And the two big ones that I've never watched were the Sopranos and the wire, which a lot mm-hmm. of people say are like the best shows ever. Like pe- people will say either of those two. So I'm like, well, let me watch the one that sounds fun first. And then I'll get to the one that sounds boring. I hear it's yeah. good, but it sounds yeah. more boring. Uh, like if I want to watch a cop show, I'll watch Brooklyn Nine Nine, which I'm do- also nice. doing a rewatch. Um, but this show came out a while ago, twenty thirty years ago, right? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how it would go if it came out today. Uh, it is either like the perfect stereotype for someone like yourself, the the uh-huh. Italian uh, stereotype. Or it's incredibly racist, and I can't tell which one it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you you can't be racist toward Italians anymore. I forget where that's written down, but I think that's that's all jokes are fine when it comes to yeah, Italians. That, that was the one, uh, you know, famous Italian Saint Joseph. Uh, that yeah. was the one thing that he had in the scriptures, but they cut it out. Yeah. It was in an yeah, early do, early early mm-hmm. document that they found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, but they yeah. didn't they didn't put, keep that one in. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's fine. So yeah, it's it's been it's been pretty fun. I realized that I'm the biggest Catholic podcaster. I've been hanging out with all your jabronis. It's been great. Yes, good. <laughs> um, I noticed also. Um, well, no, we'll get to that later. Uh, okay. I that was just me checking my notes. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I didn't say I was good. I just said I was big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, carry over from last week's show. Last week's show, we just did one long segment <laughs> instead of like our normal three. Uh, but mm-hmm. one of the things that we wove in and out of was um, we're recording. I, I doubt you've had a chance to listen to it because it just came out a couple of days ago as we're recording this. Yeah. But it was all, all this good news kind of intertwined in the middle of all of it was how the Israelites were grumbling six weeks after like the biggest miracle arguably the biggest miracle in the, in the old testament it's either that or creation <laughs> like sure. the yeah. split the, but I, I i was explaining last week with Allison that like i didn't realize that it was 650,000 people <laughs> that's just way more than like the prince of egypt showed on tv <laughs> like yeah. that's just that's a lot of people right it's a lot um, of people and that those 650,000 people were grumbling like it wasn't just like a few people like people that annoy and grumble to me it's like small groups i can't imagine yeah. 650,000 people complaining to me you know yeah yeah um, no and you tell moses had a hard time with all that <laughs> right exactly <laughs> and he wasn't good at the talky talk uh no. so that's always fun but uh kind of picking up from that story this i have questions for you and we're going to talk about two stories that happen around the same time yes it's over the course of 40 years but i mean it was 4,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago. So, you know, <laughs> with relatively around the same time. So they get free, they walk through the Red Sea, and then they grumble and complain. That's where we got to last week. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you some theological, biblical questions and see if you know the answers. I do know them this time. So we're going to see Uh-oh. if you know them. <laughs> oh, no. I don't like it when you know the answer. What? I what's the prime? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I haven't made anything up this whole show. There's been nothing yeah. <laughs> made up that I've said in the last five minutes. Uh, the Egyptians. So picture yourself. You're an, you're an Israelite in Egypt. Mm-hmm. Moses mm-hmm. frees you. You think you rejoice, but we know that they grumble, right? But yeah. for those who were excited, what were they excited that they were freed from? Slavery. Slavery. Slavery sucks. Like they were doing manual labor. Yeah. They didn't they weren't in charge of their whole life. Yeah. They weren't in charge of anything. They were told what to do. Slavery, not good, right? Yeah. Uh 
Understatement of the podcast. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I think the understatement of the podcast is how large I am. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, slavery, not good. That's our that's our hot take today. Uh, yeah. But that actually wasn't why they were freed from Egypt. God, God right. gave a reason why they were freed from Egypt. Why were they freed from Egypt? They, they were, uh, God wanted them to go to the mountain to worship. That yeah, was the they, reason why. Exactly. Yeah. They, th- yeah. He freed them from, granted, a terrible thing. We've already agreed, right? He freed them so that they did, could not be slaves, but so that they could worship him and be his people. You know, you will be my people and I will be your God. So mm-hmm. when they go out and they mess it up, and we talked about the golden calf last, last week, um, which is uh, how, what I'm calling uh, all of the lower legs of the girls that won our state champions. Golden calves. Ah, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but whenever they created that, uh, they were worshiping something. So they were freed from slavery, and they, they quickly worshipped a golden calf, right? Uh, but it, it, I've heard the kind of terminology before. Like I'm sure you've heard it too. Like we aren't just freed from sin; we're freed to do something else, right? You've probably heard that in the talk. And freed for I, free, yeah, right. Uh, so. I think for me, because I've heard that so much, I uh, just kind of ignore it whenever I hear it at this point now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not just freed from sin. I'm freed yeah. to worship God, freed for mission. I'm like, I don't know, man. It's kind of nice to be freed from stuff. It's pretty cool, you know, like not <laughs> sinning anymore. That, that's that's yeah. always great. Like growth in the spiritual life. That stuff's awesome. Sure. Uh, but. But I think because somebody didn't use the verbiage, but like the, you're not just freed from, you're freed from. Yeah, I know. Shut up. It's annoying, yeah. but you're correct. <laughs> That's essentially how I react. Uh, yeah. I think seeing like, because we went through that story last week, because that that story was kind of on my mind. And then mm-hmm. over this past week, I was reflecting on essentially the whole episode before I just grumble, grumble, grumble. Everything sucked. And then all last week was, hooray, everything's <laughs> great. But I was so focused on. Like, not only was everything great, but, like, my life has incredibly slowed down this week because track is over and I'm able to, like, catch up on work. So, like, stresses are slowly lowering from my life. Mm -hmm. Like, the height of winning the state championship, the height of the excitement that my son's arm was healed. Like, it's all starting starting to, like, come down and life's slowing down. And I'm, I'm doing good, but I'm not doing as good as I thought I was going to be once everything slowed down. Okay. And I think what I realized was not that there were some things that were good, like the track season was good and fun, yeah. but it's just over, right? So I'm like, I'm quote unquote freed from having to go to practice every day. It was uh-huh. super weird to like have a whole day at home. I'm like, what do I do with all this time? <laughs> I have so much time. And it wasn't just the time that I was at practice. Like it's not consuming my mind anymore. Like what, mm. what do I do with all this time? And you know what I didn't think to add? Uh, did you think to add maybe something like, like prayer, maybe didn't think about it till I was preparing for the show today yeah. <laughs> for a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, it's really nice to be freed from like the things that were on my to-do list, like yeah. time, energy, effort, like the first few days, if I'm being honest, like I didn't really feel all that well, I think cause the stress and excitement mm-hmm. and all just the intensity of all the positive and negative emotions of the last few weeks finally hit me. Because I didn't have anything to do other than, like, work, you know? (laughs) So I worked, and I watched Sopranos, and I'm like, I'm going to add the – what am I – I'm freed from this. Now I'm freed for watching this documentary about Father Anthony's uncle, you know? Uh, Okay, yes. But I didn't once think, hey, I should reconnect with God. Hey, I should add some more prayer time. Hey, I should read my Bible. Hey, I should go to daily – Just it just never occurred to me. Mm-hmm. until preparing for today's show and i'm like what should i talk about i haven't done anything this week <laughs> oh wait i haven't done anything this week oh no yeah exactly <laughs> so what are you gonna do what are you gonna what are you gonna do now that uh you realize this thing are you gonna do a daily here's mass? what i'm gonna do. do a holy half hour what are you gonna do here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do what i did today here's what i have done today I, when i was okay. planning the show um what i'm gonna do is what i often do when i'm very busy is I'm going to wake up and I'm going to immediately say my uh, daily offering, which is something that I do when I'm busy or not busy. I did it this morning. Great. Love it. Uh, and then my Angelus alarm is going to go off at noon on my phone. Yeah. And I'm going to argue with myself for five minutes whether or not I said the morning offering when I woke up this morning. Uh, mm-hmm. And then just in case I'm going to pray that, 
Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to start my Angelus. And like every single day after the first Hail Mary, can't remember if I did the first Hail Mary or the second. So I don't know if I should like kneel and say that the word has become flesh and dwelt among us or behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. I get really confused about whether I should worship God or if I'm a handmaid. That happens every yeah. day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I'm going to do some work and then I'm going to podcast and think about adding some more prayer time to my life. <laughs> to be fair, I prayed a lot more than I usually do around noon simply out of confusion. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's something. Just think. I don't know if that was praying or if I was thinking about praying. I mean, it's close. It's something, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it wasn't just thinking about praying. I did it. I just did every prayer twice just in case. It was a okay. lot of superstition going on around, yeah. dude. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's something. It's a start. It was a start. So I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm going to do because now I have all of May where my kids are in school and I'm not working. And then we have, or I'm sorry, I'm just working. My kids are in school. But then right. we have two months in June and July where I'm working and my kids are here. So mm-hmm. it, like, it is less busy, but it's also like more annoying because they're just here yeah. all the time. I love them. It's just a lot when their moms, because that's all new, right? This is last summer's first time we did this. Where wife is out working. She's like, bye, see ya. And I'm here <laughs> with the kids, you know? Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I keep thinking about the the Israelites, how they were like, um, what were they They, I feel a lot like them where I've been like man it's really awesome I've been focusing so much on the things that God freed me from and not what he freed yeah. me for I've been focusing on the state track win and the possible miracle healing of my son and the rest and relaxation that I've got it's been a good week right yeah. but yeah. then I was like wait 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 what's the point of all of that the point <laughs> of all of that is to worship God and I haven't really done that part all that deeply yet mm-hmm so you asked me what I'm going to do, and I don't know the answer. So this is where – I don't know if you remember, but you're a priest. I paused for a while earlier to get some advice, and you're like, what do you think? I'm like, stop stop playing reverse mind games. Just tell me what That's I should exactly do. exactly what I would have done if I was talking with, like, a parishioner. It's like, what do you think you should do? That's um, annoying. We're going to talk about your leadership as a as a pastor later. Or so <laughs> so we'll, uh, I have notes. Because <laughs> I, I find a lot of people kind of know what they should do. Like, the Lord's kind of tugging on their hearts to do something already. They just haven't been – They've been kind of ignoring it. So I'm trying to ask them not to ignore it so much. So, um, but if you want like straight up advice, I see that's the problem with giving advice. Nobody listens to it. Um, that's what? why I don't give it out very often. But if you want my advice, um, you know, especially when your kids are away, you can you can spend a half hour doing some spiritual reading. When the kids are away, the tailor can pray. Yeah. Simple enough. Doesn't have to be that like pressured or complicated, just Sit down, spend some time with Jesus. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that complicated. Great advice. Super revolutionary. Yeah. Appreciate you. Right? <laughs> Turns out, like, being holy is actually really simple. It's just also very difficult. But it is simple. Just, yeah. you, you, how about you pray some? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Appreciate you. Um, one of the next words. Okay, now I don't know the answer. Okay. Uh, I, think, I think I know the answer to this next question. So, after, after uh, how many years were they wandering the desert? 40 years. 40 years. And then they're led by who into the promised land? Oh, um, uh, not Moses. They're led by... Correct. Not Moses. Th- uh, that <laughs> narrows it down <laughs> to anyone else in history. No, no. Jesse Jacob. Why can't I remember his name? I'm um, in love with Jesse's girl. No. not. Uh, I'm going to ask you another question to help you out. What? Who's the person in the New Testament that leads us into the Holy Land of Heaven? Jesus. Okay, what is that? What, how do you say Jesus? In Joshua, Hebrew? Joshua, <laughs> there you go. I knew it started with a J. I knew it was a J. It's like, wow. Y- Yeshua. Anyway, yes. God bless yes. you. Um, <laughs> so uh, they, God's de- demand to them, which is actually kind of funny, where they were, yeah. they were slaves and now God's not just like, hey, there's this land of milk and honey. But in order to get there, you must murder thousands of foreigners. That's like that's mm-hmm. essentially what he tells them, right? Yeah. They have to go uh, shun the non-believer and kill them uh, yeah. to kick them all out of the Holy Land. And that's been a war ever since. It's been great. Uh, mm-hmm. But they get to this one battle. Joshua, you know his name now. Joshua fought the battle of... Jericho. Jericho, Jericho, <laughs> Jericho. You know that song? I ha- Yes, it's it's bringing back like... And the walls Bible came school. tumbling so, down. Yeah, it's yeah. like a mm-hmm. Halloween song. It's very good. Yeah. So uh, let's see how much you remember of this. So uh, 
they have been going around and fighting people, but I guess they didn't have many catapults because they yeah, get to a city true. and they're like, yeah. it has walls. walls. What do we do? Yeah. <laughs> you know? so, so they ask the Lord and the Lord uh, tells them, how should they, this, this mighty force that has already conquered many other nations, mm-hmm. how, how does God tell them to defeat Jericho? He tells them to go take a walk and play some instruments. <laughs> Just take a little walk around the block. We'll walk around Jericho. <laughs> Toot your horn after a few days, and uh, everything's gonna be fine. So uh, I, I like that. T- take a walk and toot your own horn. That's what I've been doing exactly. for the last mm-hmm. few days. I take a walk to try to not be the biggest podcast Catholic podcaster, <laughs> and I toot my own horn because things have been going pretty well. Uh, but I, like most, I think like a lot of people who read scripture, um, I put myself in the scenario. And could, uh, here's how I imagine the story. I'm not Joshua because I'm not cool enough to be Joshua. But I right. imagine myself. I, I'm prideful enough to think that I'm in his inner circle. Okay, that's okay. where I am All in right. the story. So I, 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 this character that I'm playing is mm-hmm. this kind of is this, is a person that's like me, right? Trying to do the right thing, a little rough around the edges. Wants to go to war, enjoys war and fighting. Uh, <laughs> And I, I, I'm like one of these generals or captains in the army, right? So where he's having this, this battle. And, I, and so I've been in many of these meetings before where it's like, hey, you know, Taylor, you're going to take your group. We're going to go out to the, to the side. I've seen enough like old school, like war, you know, like the last kingdom or these war movies where it's like, you know, we're going to flank them. And I'm like, I'm the flanking guy in, in this, okay, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. so like, I'm all about war strategy and strength and being a Viking, going to fight all these people, right? Yeah. And then I go to this war meeting. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm imagining it's like my 14th one. They've all been very successful. Everything's been going well. And yeah, then okay. he's like, guys, <laughs> God just told me that we're going to just we're not going to attack. The way we're going to defeat the walls of Jericho is going to we're going to walk around them for, for all the way around for yeah. one day. Oh, and then I, I perk up and I'm like, oh, so the next day we're going to like scale the wall you know we're gonna we're yeah. gonna we're gonna send some spies in and sneak in we've you know we've done that before right yeah. and he's like no the next day we're going to do it again <laughs> and, and every day he goes through and i'm and i'm like on the sixth day it's like i'm a large guy i'm still a large guy in this scenario right yeah uh and i'm like okay so the seventh day Seven. I, we know that's a, we know that's a, no, a biblical number. It I know that I'm important. in the Bible right now. Like it right, has right. to be seven. Yeah. So on the seventh day, we're gonna do a lap, and then charge. Right? He's like, no, we're gonna do <laughs> seven laps. So before you, we rush into battle. Yeah. We're gonna do seven laps around this kingdom. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna blow our trumpets, and the sound of the trumpets will defeat these walls. And I'm like. Why don't we do that on day one? <laughs> if, yeah. the, if we knew the trumpets had magical powers, why didn't we just do that then? My feet are very sore. I don't, <laughs> they haven't invented plantar fasciitis uh, inserts yet. Like, I'm exhausted. And mm. now, even, okay, the walls are down, but I just walked like 48 miles in the last four days. Yeah. Why, why is this the plan? That, that's, my, that's my interpretation. Who are you in this story? <laughs> Oh, um, I, I let's see who I would have, who would I? I'm obviously Joshua. I'm the holiest person on this podcast. You know, I so be you're the, the person to. pissing me off. What's the, this is working for me actually? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's like it almost sounds like in the story that like Joshua keeps making stuff up and keeps delaying because he doesn't know what's going on. It's like okay, it's the seventh day. We'll do seven laps, and then maybe right. something will happen. <laughs> uh, but it's um. It, it, God often asks his people to do like silly things in order for a miracle to happen or like really mundane things. Um, like, uh, you, know, you have to go wash in a river like seven times, or you have to, um, like tap this rock with your stick or you have to hold up your hands Not twice so that you win a bell. Not twice, just once. Um, uh, and it's kind of like, it's weird because it reveals how much in those little moments that we don't trust God. It's like, because we uh, are asked to do something normal, we're like, that can't work. That's not how holiness or things should work. You can't just go pray for a half hour and then you'll get holier. I, you got, where's the magic? Where's the pizzazz? And God's like, no, no, you don't get that. You you do a normal thing and good things will happen. Um, I think it's part of what I take from the story. 
Also, just kind of like, you know, you have an opportunity for seven days in a row to trust God or not trust God, you know, after day I one. I th think two, I'm going to struggle for like six and a half. I think on right? day three, I'm still yeah. fresh enough where I'm like, you know what? This might work. Yeah. <laughs> day one and two, I struggled. Day four, five, and six, I struggled. And yeah. I didn't believe it was going to happen until day seven. And Allison's standing there with a trumpet and she blows that thing. <laughs> and the whole wall's come down. <laughs> like, I, I just. It is a ridiculous story that I, it's one of yeah. those ones that I haven't really focused on since I was a kid. Yeah. And it's like, I put myself in it and I'm like, Oh boy. Like, I don't trust this at all. <laughs> like, yeah. I, this, like, this is weird. I, I believe the story because of how it ended, but I try to like, I think I live most of my life in those first six days and like pissed off on the seventh day mm -hmm. that I'm having to do. Why, why are you asking me to do all this stuff? And nothing seems to be working. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, I, I've been, I've, I've been thinking about that story a lot about trust and persistence. I mm -hmm. think I do lack trust, and I think yep. because I last lack trust, I often I'm a persistent and stubborn person. But right. like day five, if Joshua wasn't there saying, "Guys, we got two more days, it's gonna work," yeah. If if that person's not there, I'm like, screw this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> go somewhere else, you know. Or I'm gonna like go sneak in. I'm, I'm like, what? I, I'd probably take it into my own hands and like go sneak in and find some way to open up the gate, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like there were very way more practical ways to do this. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. the story ends with the walls come down, and you know who else is shocked? Everyone. <laughs> the Everybody. Israelites are shocked. The Jerichoans are shocked, and yeah. so they just go in and they win the battle super easily. Well, I'm like. Man, it ended up working out way better than anything that I would have come up with. It just seemed so weird, and I feel like that's what most of living Catholicism is. It's like, yeah, we just need to have a little bit more trust that these things that are super weird actually work. <laughs> yeah, I like that a lot. I like that. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. Uh, okay. Well, uh, we're going to take a little break. Don't go anywhere. Whenever we come back, uh, you're going to put me to the test. I asked you a bunch yeah. of random biblical questions that I wasn't really prepared to ask you uh, because we gave more uh, it's uh, more background than I planned to do. That, re I did not plan on retelling that whole Jericho story. That was a lot of fun. And I will it never was, not it. read that story with you being Joshua, me being mad at you, and Allison standing next to me blowing a trumpet. That, that, that's yeah. just, that's that just completely now. changed that story for me. Um, but you're going to put me to test. We're going to bring you back an old segment called Fancy Catholic Words, and you're going you're gonna to see um, if I know the words. Uh, yeah. These fancy, fancy Catholic words. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The new season of Allison Sullivan's podcast, Center Saint Sister, is now available. Season 10 just launched last week, and it's doing great. The people are loving the episodes from these uh, late. It's an interview with these ladies called I'm Mom So Hard, and they're very, very popular. People seem to like them. You can check out that episode, uh, all of her past episodes, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts, but also because her show is now a member of the Forte Catholic Podcast Network, you can find all of her episodes in full video uh, on Forte Catholic's YouTube channel, Forte Catholic, or sorry, youtube.com slash Forte Catholic. All of Allison's uh, episodes are there for your listening and watching pleasure. Not only is her show there, obviously this show is there. Full length episodes of this podcast in video format. We've also got our Catholic Perspective series, our Catholic Foundation series, uh, speaking, music, all kinds of stuff at youtube.com slash Forte Catholic. Head on over there, subscribe, uh, check it out. Welcome back to Forte Catholic. I'm Taylor Schroll and that is definitely a mob boss. Uh, or Joshua. Oh, the original <laughs> mob boss. We're going to take down this wall after seven days. <laughs> That's my very bad Italian mob impression. Um, they can't hurt me for it because they didn't realize it was an Italian mob impression. So uh, we're, we're going to play this game called Fancy Catholic Words. And I think it's different than what you originally intended. I, th I think this was, was this originally my idea or your idea? I, I know we came up with it t around, like t we were talking to each other. I just don't know right. who gets credit. Um, I'm going to give myself credit. Um, okay. Seems because uh right because I, I this is one of the very few segments i actually do work for so yeah you prepare for it so mm -hmm. i i don't remember who came up with it we'll say you did but i sure. do remember that the we this is our third time playing fancy catholic words mm -hmm. where you have a list of fancy catholic words that i'm gonna uh i think the original intention was that i was gonna guess whether they were right or wrong or not and you were going to tell me if i was right or wrong and then mm -hmm. sometimes something happened during that first game where it became, I'm going to explain to you what this word means, whether you like it or not, and I'm yes. going to be right no matter what you say. 
<laughs> yes. Yes. Because I That's don't exactly. like being wrong on this show, which is why uh, I always do all the preparation. So I know all the answers. And mm-hmm. none of you ever prepare. And you finally seemed like you had your life together, meaning I saw you playing a lot of video games this week where I finally Doesn't felt mean I okay. I have my life together. Does not mean that. <laughs> it means you're more relaxed than you, ha- than you have been the last few months that we've recorded. Sure, so sure. the last – I've wanted to play this game for like three months. I just didn't have the guts or gumption to ask you because you were mm-hmm. incredibly busy and stressed. And I could see that in a plethora of ways. But you've been playing a lot of – you have not known it's not just that you've been trying new games like you're yes you're venturing out in your relaxation I so i was like mm-hmm. if he can play that many hours of video games he can prepare eight w- words or whatever Fair right enough. so um go this is your show it's your okay, game yeah Let's so go. here we go i'm branching out because we got we got a lot of the words that i am familiar with so i had to do a little bit more research for this and i'm going to try to go from less difficult or what i think taylor might know to what taylor It'd be impressive if you knew it. Okay, so you ready for this? Start off simple. Hagiography. Taylor Schroll, what is hagiography? Um, <laughs> so there's this uh, Protestant pastor in San Antonio named yeah. John Hagee. And the oh. joke is that he, uh, I think it's called Cornerstone Baptist. Something like that. But I went to college there for four years. His name is John Hakey. He was one of these big uh, m- mega preachers, right? Mm-hmm. And he was like the doom and gloom and the like, uh, you know, Jesus is coming back. And also Catholics are the whore of Babylon. Like, he was super mm-hmm. anti-Catholic. Uh, but apparently like, he's a good speaker. He's pretty convincing. Uh, so the largest, th- the joke was, it was kind of a sad joke, was that John Hagee's church was the largest Catholic church in all of San Antonio. San Antonio is uh, a very Catholic place, a lot, yeah. vibrant Catholic community, but there were more Catholics, baptized Catholics, at John Hagee's church every Sunday morning Ooh, than there were yeah. at every other Catholic church. So I think hagiography uh, is uh, the study of why Catholics were leaving and joining John Hagee's church. That's the real answer, the the, the fake, stupid answer, like if you Google it, is the yeah. study of like Greek stuff. But, you know, we're going to stick with my original answer. Yes, uh, let me check. Yes, you are correct. It's the study <laughs> of how uh, Catholics fall away from the church and join uh, John Hagee's church. Now, you will find some people say hagiography hey, is are the stories of the saints, sometimes embellished a little bit, but the stories of the saints are hagiographical hey, hey, writings. Oh, okay. okay. So e- even my secondary guy, I thought I was actually pretty confident. The whole reason I did that, I was pretty confident it was the Greek thing. So it wasn't even yeah. that. I guess I was I guess I was thinking like Hellenistic, like that's the only H word I could think of, like there's a gonna be a lot of greek words in this in this segment so you weren't wrong about the greek that's hallelujah yeah that's that's not greek. That's a, okay what what oh sorry i said that hallelujah is not greek Anywho. oh dang it that was such a good timed joke it was just wrong kyrie eleison uh, yes, there we go i fixed it, I fixed that, it. that's that is greek it was it was it was correct Timing on both of those jokes, and I was really proud of the timing. Only the first one was wrong, but it set up perfectly for the second one. I'm so proud of that, and only like eight people got it. I'm, we're just moving on. Let's do the next word. <laughs> moving on. Uh, I'll give you this is another Greek, another Greek. Uh, iconostasis. Iconostasis or iconostasis? Iconostasis. So when I think icono, I think of like. Um, I think of statues and how uh, people like John Hagee hate that we have statues and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. you know, oh, mm-hmm. those Catholics, they worship the statues. I'm like, no. No. We, we, we don't. This is very stupid. <laughs> um, I saw a picture the other day. It was like a meme of like, uh, here's a picture of all the Catholics who have ever worshipped Mary. And it was just like desert for miles. Which is very <laughs> 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 I wanted okay. to like zoom in and see like one like 93 year old Abula, but essentially. Yeah, just like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's that one lady, you know, the same lady who has, uh, you know, Tom Brady as her Jesus in her little thing. But um I, I kind of stasis. I think I've heard this because stasis, uh, as, like even in like the Destiny Two game that you played, it's like you know it's it's like freezing people or whatever, mm-hmm. right? So I think iconostasis is going to be something like the I, 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 even before modern Protestants and you know people like John Hagee. I think er, pretty early in the church, around one of the schisms or whatever, they yeah. were like, we should stop having statues. And this is the anti-statue people saying we should stasis, we should stop mm-hmm. having icons. So no more icons and no more worshiping statues. Okay. 
Um, you are uh, um, correct um, in as much as you're thinking of a different word. So that'd be a conoclasm. <laughs> um, so, but in that sense, in that sense, you are correct. And the kind of stasis is, um, you know how like we have altar rails in the Roman Catholic churches? In no, Eastern Catholic churches. We don't actually. Yeah, I know. Sometimes you do. <laughs> Sometimes there's altar rails, yeah. um, but in the east, instead of altar rails, they have like these kind of um, big, like almost like fences. And on these like fences that go from the ground to the ceiling, a bunch of icons on it. And it's the way they yeah. separate the sanctuary from the rest of the people. That's the iconostasis. Oh, OK. So I didn't realize this. I've seen that. So I, w- I went to a yeah. Byzantine Rite Mass and it's just beautiful. Like it's just, mm-hmm. just another way to add beauty to um, uh, I was I was actually just watching. Have you? Wait, yeah, you have. You watched Ted Lasso with me, didn't you? Didn't yes. we watch like two seasons? Okay, so in yeah. the new season, which you haven't seen yet, um, there's a guy who says, um, it, it's, I'm going to mess up the quote. I have it in my phone. Maybe I'll look it up in a second. Yeah. But it's like, he had an ugly life, but he was always searching for beauty. I was talking about Van Gogh. He was talking about Van Gogh. Um, uh, I got the quote wrong, but it's like, he, he, he had some messed up things in his life, but he was always searching for beauty and how that searching for beauty was always a good thing. And like, I think the East very much is searching for beauty and I loved seeing those icons, but why is it stasis? Like, cause, cause when I hear stasis, I think of like things not moving. It's just cause those things don't move on the altar. I why assume is, why is so. Stasis? Like it's a structure. It's like a, a, a yeah, that's my guess. I don't know. I'm not going to break down the Greek. Good. I'm glad you did enough. Uh, I, I, you, Listen, I know I, what it I, is. I, I don't know if you ever heard, learned anything in like, uh-huh. did y'all take like a methods class? I know you took like a, uh, uh, homiletics class, like how to give homilies. Yeah. Did y'all mm-hmm. take like a methods class, like a um, catechetical methods class in? Oh no, uh, no, 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 what, no. What do you call? What What did you? We go were not seminary? taught how to teach people. No. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, Which that's not surprising. Kind of, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the joke for me is I. So I went to my grad school. I uh, went to get a grad degree in theology with a specialization in catechetics. Catechetics is the how to pass down the faith. Catechane, pass mm-hmm. down the faith, right? right. Uh, another Greek word. There's <laughs> a Greek word for you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I went and I did all the classes in catechesis on how to teach, but I didn't take any of the theology classes. So I don't know what to teach, but I'm really good at it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as soon uh, as I learn something, I'm going to teach yeah. it real good. I'll tell exactly. you that much. Exactly. Um, but one of the things that they that they teach us in methods class or or any teaching, right? Anybody that's a leader or whatever, it's like you should only be teaching about ten percent of what you know, which means you should know about ninety percent more, so that when somebody asks you a question, you can follow up. Uh, mm-hmm. It was pretty clear that they didn't teach you that in seminary. I nope. never thought about you're, that. You're getting everything I know, <laughs> and sometimes that's, it's not a lot. <laughs> it is wild to me. We've talked before. You and I have talked yeah. before. I think we even talked to Father Harrison about it too. Like how, like I I don't know anything when it comes to like the stuff that y'all learn Mm -hmm. in like, I don't know as much theology as you guys. I actually ask y'all a lot of theology questions. I ask you, you two are my go-to for theology questions, for canon law questions, for stuff that comes up in ministry. But like it is, I should be teaching something in seminaries. Like (laughs) it's ridiculous how little they teach you for stuff that's super practical, but you, yeah, they teach us a lot uh, of stuff, but not necessarily a lot of practical stuff. It depends on the seminary, but that's kind of the vibe I'm getting from most places. So it it uh, kills me. Uh, If anybody wants to pay me money to teach what what you don't already teach in your seminaries, let me know. Sounds good. All right. Let's see. Uh, We're mix up different term. Um, Straight up English here. You ready for this? It is altar horns. What are or what is an altar horn? Altar horn. I heard a joke the other day. Okay. Uh, why are they called unicorns? They don't have one corn. They have one horn. They should be called unihorns. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh an altar horn actually harkens back to something we we're talking about in uh the last episode it's mm-hmm. uh whenever the the second half of mass we have the liturgy of the word at the beginning and the liturgy of the eucharist at the end and uh actually learning from we finally have an english word but we're learning from our our uh eastern friends like mm-hmm. in the the when i saw the iconoclasm or whatever the heck you call it mm-hmm. like, like what was the word iconostasis iconostasis, iconostasis when, I, when i saw that 
um, they would walk out and they would say, wisdom, be attentive before all the readings to make sure that everybody knows that the word of God is about to be preached. And on a practical level, that's the theological level, but me thinking the practical level, just to yeah. wake everybody up, right? We've been Absolutely. here a while. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's uh, the West took that. And uh, like you said, we're supposed to have altar rails. We don't have that. We also used to have these, uh, these what did you call them? Unicorns? What do we have? Altar, altar, altar horns. Altar horns. <laughs> we had these altar horns. And that was, so instead of wisdom being attentive in the first half, the, the little choir boys uh, would, would come down and they would uh, blow the altar horn during yeah. the during the Eucharistic prayer because like they, we know like priests actually finally asked lay people a question for once. And mm -hmm. they were like, you know, sometimes we get a little bored with the same thing being read at every mass over and over again. So uh, you may fall asleep. You may start to, uh, you know, lose, lose, uh, not consciousness, although it does feel like that sometimes uh, just lose focus <laughs> a little bit. So yeah. whenever uh, a choir boy from up, up in the, in the altar on the, uh, not on the altar on the, uh, in the choir loft, sure. see yeah. somebody falling asleep, they'll just blow the horn, just completely randomly whenever they're super trained eight-year-olds and they'll blow yeah. the altar horn. That's what they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as you know, uh, liturgical reforms and things change over time. So after the people are like, hey, can you help us out? Let us know when the important parts are. Uh, then the priest's like, all right, we have these horns. The problem was uh, a lot of the uh, eighth grade servers were very bad at it and it was kind of obnoxious. So we changed it to bells and everyone can ring a bell. Easy peasy. Now, you may find some people on the Internet saying that an altar horn is um, and you may have you may, an image came to my head. It's like, you know, uh, on altars, the corners um, that like if you see, like maybe in video games, when they're like they're curved up on each of the corners. Those are yeah. altar yeah. horns that would have been on Jewish altars, um, but we still refer to the four corners of the um, uh, altar as the altar horn even though it doesn't have that little curving up piece that looks like a horn that's real stupid that we still call yeah. it that even though it's not there that'd be yeah. like hey everybody come look at my six pack it's what i call it you can't see it and it's not there but it's still called a six pack <laughs> mm -hmm. yep so that's why i've never heard about it before so anyway it's, it's really uh, stupid like that one makes me genuinely mad <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man. So, uh um, Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. This is this is a fun one. Okay, the term is. I I just thought of it. <laughs> when, when, yeah. Whenever last summer when you came and did the retreat with me and you said mass with all the the deer heads all around you. Yes, <laughs> those, those were the those altar were horns because the <laughs> they were like. Now I'm thinking of every altar as a four point buck. You know, like. <laughs> yep. Anyway, mm -hmm. anyway, keep move on before I keep talking. <laughs> okay, this word. Hexameron. Hexameron. Oh. H-E-X-A-E-M-E-R-O-N. Oh. That was really easy. I was just yeah. listening to a podcast the other day uh, about yeah. Transformers. You know, you've got, uh, uh, you know, you've got Sky Fox or Mario or whoever they call them, and then they've got yeah. uh, 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 Optimus Prime saying, what if we leave and you are wrong? Uh, he's just one of the bad guys that Optimus Prime beats up. I don't, I don't know. Right. That yeah, has yeah. nothing to do with Catholicism. You're ruining the show. This is supposed to be fancy Catholic words. No, 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 because it, it turns up, like, out this guy was – That Transformer you're talking about was a fallen away Catholic. Um, so he became a Protestant Transformer, and therefore they had to purge him from the group, and he became a bad guy. And that's Hexen Wait, Aaron. wait, 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 wait. Yeah. I never went to John Hagee's church, but you're telling me there was a Transformer there the whole time? I would have went. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Why do you think so many people stayed? Like they came for the talks, they stayed for the transformer. You know? That's awesome, right? We're we're putting up quite this. Uh... I'm lost in the lie at this point. I have no idea what it actually <laughs> means. <laughs> what does okay. it actually mean? <laughs> okay, what it actually means is it's the six days um, of creation. So, um, oh man, you got deep in the lie. Like usually, you say yeah. I'm right, and then working it. You kept the lie up so much that I was like, yeah. "Wait, what does it mean?" <laughs> no, it's totally different. <laughs> I was, I thought you legitimately were like, "It's a fallen away Catholic." I'm like, "Oh, I'm gonna call them that now." <laughs> <laughs> They're all transformers. They transformed from Catholic into Protestant. Oh um, hex, that makes sense. Uh, okay, cool. So yeah. say it again. Uh, Hexamarin is the. Uh, Signifies a term of six days, or technically the history of the six days of creation. That time of six days, Hexamarin. Hex. Um, I, I I liked that it sounded like a transformer, but I, I'm looking back and watching the tape, and I'm realizing that I could have said something about magic and wizards. 
putting the hex it on is. you. Anyway. But that, uh, but, well, you know uh, which, which is our fault of the Catholics. It would have worked perfectly. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Let's see. Now I'm trying to see one that fits into the story we're creating. But um... okay, next word is metempsychosis. Say it again. Metempsychosis. God bless you. <laughs> metempsychosis. <laughs> metempsychosis. I'm going to say... Um, I, I, I have a question for you. I, I, that is going to lead into my answer, okay. uh, but I need some, I need some extra information. There's yeah. the four stages of the spiritual life. You've heard this before where it's yeah. like, what are they again? Uh, well, it's usually three, um, uh, purgation, purgation, enlightenment yeah. and union or something along those lines. I thought there was a fourth one. Purgative, unitive, uh, no purgative. Illuminative unitive is one way to say it. Okay. So uh I whatever it is, yeah. three or four, you know, like the Trinity with Mary. Sure you can break it up into more. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you can break up into seven stories or Oh, I hate that things. book. That book sucks. Uh <laughs> but the 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 thing that I'll never get to, and ironically, this is gonna help make my point, is yeah. where uh the unitive, I'm just so far from it. <laughs> just mm-hmm. so far from it yeah. that like I, I think I think I go back and forth between the purgative and the like the enlightened one, yeah, right? Where it's like the enlightened yeah. one is like, oh, you're connecting with God, you're getting like spiritual insights into your life yeah. and into the by, reading the Bible. It's like I live there a lot, but every now and then, or like every day, I have yeah. to go back into the purgative because I'm a bad person, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, anytime I hear a story of uh, somebody who's in the unitive, like where they're like the mystics, right? Where they're mm-hmm. having these like where it's like they're on they call it ecstasy for a reason. It's like they're on ecstasy and they're having these like super <laughs> encounters with God. And I'm just over here. Like how much longer is this mask going to go? I'm hungry. You know, like, <laughs> so I, I think they have that minimum psychosis and that's what I'm going to call their, uh, their encounters with the Lord. Cause it seems psychotic to me. It, very good. Very good. Um, like I said, you know, sometimes you find different definitions on the internet. So I just want to uh-huh. warn the listeners that it is the doctrine, not the Catholic doctrine, but the heresy a doctrine of the transmigration of souls. So basically a soul pops from like person to different bodies. It's not quite reincarnation. It's like instead of like dying, coming back as a new thing, you're just, the soul just pops around to different things. Like, boop, 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 boop. like while they're alive, I've never heard this. Like while they're alive? Uh, I think it's when they die. Yeah, they have a succession of bodies, but it's it's like you might pop into like an animal body that's still alive or something. Like when you die. Yeah. So I either, how, what? How is it not reincarnation? Because you're you're not taking like a new body. You're taking something else's body. So like maybe it's like a baby and you get, you pop in there and you take the the baby's body or it's like an animal and you pop over there when the animal dies and pop over to another animal. So reincarnation. (laughs) Sort of. Except it's more, it's more like stealing bodies than it is getting a new one. This is... Uh, very close, very close to uh, my favorite movie of all time, Down to Earth with Chris yeah. Rock. Uh, before he got slapped into oblivion, God accidentally killed him and he had to come back and get a new body. Have you ever seen mm-hmm. this? Wait, I think I have. Or I've heard about this. I I might have told you before. It's one. Of, it's yeah. the greatest movie of all time, super underrated because no one's ever heard of it. It's yeah. incredible where he dies and his life was going great. He, he was just starting to take off. He was you know, had a, had a, getting a girlfriend that he'd been tra- uh, attracted to for a while. And he was a stand-up comedian. It was finally starting to go well. And then he dies and it was a mistake. So he goes up to the pearly gates and like Peter, the Peter character is like super like, Oh crap, we messed up. They have to call the God character. And they're like, God, we made a mistake. And God's like, yeah, your like soul has like 30 years left to live. Yeah. But, Everybody saw you die. Like, you can't go back into your body. So we're going to take you to these bodies of people that are dying before anybody knows that they're dead. And we're going to let you mm-hmm. pick that body. And Chris Rock, who played a guy that looks like Chris Rock, came back as a rich, old, white man. <laughs> 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 and it was just very funny. It's a great premise for a movie. And it's this word. Uh, yeah, I th- it is. I think- it's, it's metempsychosis. That's what the movie's about. Perfect. Metem, metem, metem. Metem, metem, metem. Okay. Do we want to do one more? Yeah. You got how many? Is that what you have left? One more? Uh, I got two more. If you want to do two more, okay, let's do it. Okay, let's finish them. This up. one, you you did you finally did show prep. Let's use it. <laughs> yeah, why not? Okay, um, okay. This word is called antiphonary. Antiphonary. What is an antiphonary? 
antiphonary. It's the study of the antiphon. So these things that we say before, uh, I think there's one before mass starts. We do it a lot at daily mass. We actually did it at daily masses that you celebrated for us at the retreat. So there's an antiphon before mass starts. There's one before, um, after the prayers of communion, but before the people receive, there's a mm-hmm. there's an antiphon. I think it's the study of those antiphons. The most famous ones being the O antiphons, like the um, the O come, O come, Emmanuel around Christmas time. It's the study of all of those. Uh, you are so close, so close it, that it's. I'm going to say that you understood this. Um, it is actually an antiphonary is a book of antiphons it's a liturgical book of the antiphons because these are actually where, assigned for each day you can get a how book am i going to study antiphons. them without the book obviously it's part of it <laughs> yeah okay well, yeah. <laughs> study book antiphons pretty good pretty i good. was actually finally close for real so yeah for me. real I, like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean i guess that one was a transformer earlier this is as close mm-hmm. as i'm gonna get mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh okay last last word last so wait, word. wait 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 oh, wait oh. what why would there be a book of antiphons? I, I guess other than to fix my or continue my joke of having to study them. Why would there be a book separately of just antiphons when like shouldn't they just be in like the priest's mass book? Yeah, and there's but I think you, you can have different chant tones for different antiphons, so it probably has all the music for the antiphons as well that you can use. Um, and there is more uh, like you can use basically an antiphon for um, or it's called a gradual, but it's basically the same thing. Instead of a psalm response, there's a few more different ones you can use. Um, so it probably has like the music notation and everything. So, so wait, I could shorten mass by having a, sh- instead of doing the psalm, I can do an antiphon. Yeah. The Lord it's very, is it's a very holy. Thing to do. And then <laughs> a reading for the book of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The problem is like, a lot of times, at least when we do them in our church, they're very long chants. So it's like, it, it, it it's a wash for us when we do them. Um, Did you ever see the, the old commercial? Um, what was it for? But it was like they were making a collect call. Remember those? And he was mm-hmm. like, uh, please state your name after the tone. Hi, it's Bobby Had a Baby Eats a Boy. <laughs> and, then, and then they hang up and he doesn't have to get it. And he's like, who was that? It was Bob. He had a baby. It's a boy. That's how I would do those things in mass. And I'd be <laughs> like, uh, you know, uh, the Lord is kind of gracious and merciful. And all the nations and all the people of the walls of Jericho fell down. And somebody would be like, sold to the person in the back. <laughs> that would be the whole answer. <laughs> You should do that like a Catholic like uh, garage sailor like and just have the instead of the, 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 the chant. I love that. I love that. <laughs> That's they, we do we do we have a, what are they called uh, the auctioneers or whatever. Auction, we have yeah. we have that at our parish festival, which is actually this coming weekend. This past weekend, if you're listening to this uh, after yeah. it comes out, it'd be pretty hard to listen to it before. Um, but that we have an auctioneer, and I really want them to use chants like just, just hand chant it to them. <laughs> The Lord's my shepherd, that is nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> For God's love, the world that I gave his only son that whoever believes in his life have eternal life. <laughs> four dollars, four dollars. <laughs> no, three sixteen, three sixteen. <laughs> Sold to the man in the red hat. And there he goes, oh, Bishop. Man. <laughs> Bishop swinging that money around. Yeah. All right, okay. last one. Adoptionism. Last word is adoptionism. Ooh, this this goes back to uh, a question that I had for you. We talked about earlier about how we had uh, I have a lot of theological theological questions for you, where uh, one was a very th- intense question of, are we children of God when we are born? And the answer that you gave me that I don't like is no. We have to get yeah. baptized first to become children of God. Uh, mm-hmm. I knew baptism was important, but like I didn't realize we were that serious about the yeah. becoming children of God. There, you're still so, loved by God. You're created by God, but you're not a child until baptism. Right. So that's that's the adoptionism where God God is your adopted father, and uh, like unlike most parents, where uh, your child is an accident or a surprise, uh, God chose you. <laughs> you were not mm-hmm. an accident or a surprise. He chose to be your dad. That's yes, adoptionism. Correct. Um, very, very close. It, this adoption is the heresy that that's what happened to Jesus, that Jesus was a regular yeah. dude. And at some point in time, he was adopted by God, the father to be his son. This so is mine now. Yeah, no, but Jesus actually is the son of God by his nature. While we are sons and daughters of God by uh, Christ's sacrifice for us in baptism. And there you go. It's very good. It's very good. That's some good words there. Well, I think I got seven out of eight. <laughs> yeah. 
That was rough. <laughs> I had a <laughs> There's blast. Some ones in there. I had a I had an absolute blast. This is great. I'm going to make you do some more show prep. The, the show is good when uh, I'm not in charge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't go anywhere. I do we'll sometimes run. I do sometimes run shows myself, so it's it's not totally unfamiliar to me. I just don't like working for your show. I, I like love the fact that. I said that the show is better when I'm not in charge, and then I retook over, and you just completely talked over the outro to the segment. That was yeah. a perfect encapsulation of everything we both just said, just super awkwardly, and I loved mm-hmm. it very much. Don't go anywhere. We'll, we'll come right back. We're, we, we, we've gone pretty long. We're going to have a short little final segment um, that I specifically want to talk uh, to Father Anthony about a um, – a leadership growth area that I had, primarily from a person that I don't think he likes, which is why I'm going to talk to you about it. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. If you want to support the ministry that we are doing here at Forte Catholic and also support our family, you can do so at www.fortecatholic.com slash donate. Allison knows I hate when people use the www dot beforehand, but I did it anyway. Fortecatholic.com slash donate is a way that you can support us with a one-time donation or become a part of the backbone of our income here. The thing that supports us and helps us to run every day is our monthly donors. But either way, we'd really appreciate your support. Fortecatholic.com slash donate. We are a government organization. 501c3, which means that we are a nonprofit and a Catholic organization. So the government's happy, God's happy with your tithe, and we're happy because we get to keep doing what we're doing, and I and I get to feed my kids. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. Fortecatholic.com slash donate. Welcome back to Forte Catholic. I am Taylor Stroll, and that is almost Pastor Father Anthony Sharapa. Uh you didn't get you didn't get a letter yet, huh? I, you- I no one has told me anything about moving my assignment. Don't you don't you I've got no information. Some of my parishioners found this podcast. They're going to be freaking out. I've heard nothing. Don't expect anything. Uh, Having said it could happen any day. Who knows? Well, okay. So that's what I was asking. So, yeah. uh, I uh, yeah, it's public knowledge now. So, our associate pastor, who was actually just on the show a few weeks ago, uh, mm-hmm. and I knew he's a young, just like a young pastor, super bright, super pastoral, just like a good dude. And yeah. we thought we were going to have him for two years. But then our pastor, pastor, I've told the story on the, on the show before, um, our pastor, took his sabbatical after 17 years, well-deserved. Uh, mm-hmm. So the associate pastor, who's younger than both of us, he's 30 years old, 31 years old, um, oh, uh, filled in, and he's 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 like seems like he's 45. Like he's he's, he's got a lot of energy of the 31-year-old, but he just he's yeah. just super grown up, right? Uh, yeah. And he did a great job while our pastor was out for three months, and I knew that it spelled doom for yeah. how long he was going to yeah. be here, right? And sure enough, he just found out a few weeks ago, let us know, and then – made it public last weekend, which is why I can talk about it now, um, that that he's getting moved. So I know that like our diocese just did it. Like they just told all the pr- priests or pastors or wherever you're moving, you're moving. Have, they, have you heard from anybody else? Like, is anybody else moving? Like, when do they do that for y'all? It should be right around now, huh? It's been, cha- yeah, yeah. So th- we've known there's been a few um, openings, some guys retiring and stuff, and they're doing a much better job of like letting guys like apply for certain um, positions and trying to get, people's insight and stuff um because we only have so many people so they're trying to actually incorporate us more into the process which is kind of nice um which is why i've gotten like nothing so i'm not totally worried about that that's kind of funny you're like they're incorporating us more into the process and i know nothing (laughs) right which means i think it's a very funny statement it is it is (laughs) they're doing so much better yet i still know zero (laughs) right right right. which is a good sign it probably means i'm staying but yeah usually our um ordinations are later in the year they're like at the end of june so it'll be after that that we'll probably get a list of changes yeah okay well uh whether it happens in the next few months, few weeks, or yeah. it happens next year, it's it's we all know it's coming. You're gonna be pastor here pretty soon, right? So, uh, you've been a priest for it's, it's been six years, yes, six years yeah, it'll this, be, it'll be like seven this summer, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, seven this summer, yeah. So, it was two years, oh, yeah, it was two years ago I came to Pittsburgh because you came to me last summer. I keep forgetting that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll be seven years, um. I've asked you, like, you know, oh, what are the big fruits here, priesthood? What are the, uh, like, wh- how have you gone? But I want to know specifically as a leader. You've now, yeah. uh, you, you really like this pastor that, you, that you're with now. He's a good leader. Yeah. How mm-hmm. do you think you've grown as a leader? Not specifically as, like, you know, saying mass or what. Like, right, we know right, that right. those are roles of leader. But, like, leader, pastorally, how do you think you've grown as a leader in the last almost seven years? Oh, uh, I think there's a few ways. Um, learning from little mistakes um, has been... <laughs> A big part of it, like you don't learn from the uh, big ones. <laughs> uh, I haven't made like super big ones, thank God. Like no one's, 
Maybe I have made big mistakes and I haven't learned from them because I have no idea what I did wrong. Um, but uh, one of the things is you don't have to make a decision right away. Like my inclination is like, oh, I have to fix this right now. I have to decide right now. But you're in the middle of like the moment or the crisis. And a lot of times decisions made in those moments, they're not good ones. You know, so you can you can take a day or, you know, take some time to actually pray about or talk to other people. Um, That's actually really good. I'm going I'm yeah. to let you keep going. But it, yeah. it's interesting that you bring that one up specifically because it's yeah. not one that I think about a lot. But it is something that I that I have learned more in my leadership as in coaching is. Mm -hmm. I have 36 people and I'm planning with, with my other coaches and, and with them on a spreadsheet before, you know, every week, right? Yeah. So it's really hard for me to remember what I actually decided because a lot of times there were like 18 different scenarios that we could have done, right? So when they ask me, I used to try to think, oh, I just remember everything. But now I know yeah. that my brain lives in a spreadsheet on my phone and my computer. And yeah. they would ask me, what am I doing? Or what is this? Or what, you know, I, I used to try to remember how many steps each one had for their handoffs. I don't even try anymore because I would make a little mistake and it would add confusion to the, to the situation. Right. Now I know that it's better to not answer the question immediately, look at my notes, or say, I'm not going to answer you right now. Sometimes it comes off a little bit more terse than it should. Shut up and leave me alone. I'm talking to somebody else, right? Uh, but it's like, I'll answer you later when I have time to think about it and time to go and uh, get more information. Okay, keep going. Yeah. And the next one is something that I still need to uh, work on, um, but I realize how much more important it is, is communication. Um, and, you know, that sounds a little cliche, but even something like I received your email, I'll get back to you later. Or like uh, just making sure you spend time uh saying hello to you know your staff people and talking with them and just like being around um letting them know that like you care that you're there um and then also like just uh communication for business stuff you know not to leave people hanging or whatever um also uh i've been more comfortable with telling people um what i need like it's like please feel free to text me if there's an emergency or like you know you have my cell phone number that texts work great for me that's really fine it's like you are allowed to remind me of things and you don't have to feel bad about it because usually reminding me of something is good because a lot of times I forget. So don't you mean feel like bad reminding about reminding you me about something. four times this week that I asked you to do fancy Catholic words. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm never insulted by that because that's one of my weak things. And I, I texted you three, year, three hours ago and you hadn't done it yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's it. Um, so, so that uh, has been important. Um, Another that's good. Is, I uh, like your email yeah. thing. I, I think yeah. I'm not very good at that. I, I tend to let emails sit flagged in my inbox, especially because the last like week and a half has been crazy. There's like people that are like, hey, did you get my email? Did it go to junk mail? I'm like, nah, I saw it. I just didn't answer it. You know, like, yeah. I need to answer it when I'm in a better headspace, and it's taken me a week and a half to get to a better headspace. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm sure you have more, to... but that's that's yeah. a great list. Uh, yeah. I want to I I finish up by um, talking about uh, – I think I've brought him up before and I think you're not a fan, but uh, yeah. there's nobody in this world that makes me think more than Malcolm Gladwell. Wait, do I know him? Malcolm Gladwell, the author, the podcaster, the speaker. Is it not? So, okay. Somebody on this podcast hates him. I okay. thought it was you. It's not me because I didn't even recognize that name. Yeah. Yeah. He's like a, uh, I think he's super intellectual because he's way smarter than I am. But a lot of my intellectual friends are like, he's a fake and it's just fake intellect. And I'm like, I don't know, man. He's way smarter <laughs> than I am. You know? <laughs> and, I th and I think he's way smarter than you are, too, people who think yeah. you're intellectual. You know, yeah. um, I don't agree with everything that he said. Uh, we, we talked about him with uh, – I talked to you about it. I, that's why I thought you didn't like him. The whole David and Goliath thing, how the David mm -hmm. and Goliath story was different. It came from his book called David and Goliath. I thought you didn't like okay. him, but that's what I, – I, I, I might not have liked the point that we talked about, but – Anyway, I don't agree with everything that he says, but I agree. Yeah. I do agree with about 85 to 90% of what he says. And I really like, like, so even when I disagree with the content, we talked about this earlier, I like his method. I like how he teaches, how he goes about mm -hmm. things. And I know that there, and, and we've gotten feedback too, that like some people that, because I've brought him up maybe five or six times, because I read his audio or listen to his audio books. I listen to every episode of his podcast. He's a great storyteller and he makes me think whether I like it or not. He makes me reevaluate things in my life to get better or challenge me. Right. Um, but he was talking about how uh, leadership is not a task. I'm sorry. Leadership is a task, not a title. So like mm -hmm. you, you are a leader. You have to be a leader, not just because your title is associate pastor or eventually pastor right. or my mine as track coach or dad or hu husband or um, uh, whatever, right? Coach, podcaster, whatever it is, right? 
leadership is a task, not just a title. Um, and I think he backed this up really well because I think he is really smart and he is pretty respected. He, he, he came up, uh, as a, as a writer. So he wrote for like, uh, not the wall street journal, the, um, golly, New York times. No, um, it's the something some soup. I had it a second ago. Anyway, I'm proving I'm not as intellectual as he is. Um, some super fancy, like hoity toity magazine. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, He's had this podcast for like six or seven seasons. He's a New York Times bestselling author for like eight different books, like just super well regarded. Right. Mm -hmm. He went and debated uh, against this guy, a formal debate. And he was of the position. The debate was about, can we trust mainstream media? Because he worked in mainstream media as a writer for a very long time. And they had a debate where he was for and the other guy was against and Malcolm, who's not a debater, right? He's a he's yeah. an author and he's smart and he he will debate people or have discussions uh, with people that he disagrees with on the podcast. But he's not a professional debater, right? He yeah. got destroyed. He got <laughs> absolutely destroyed in this debate, and it was like it was like a formal debate, like like people have like debate class in high school and right. they go up to the, the you know like we we think like presidential elections, whatever. But people are trained for this, and the way that it's voted right. on is they ask people. Um, in, in the audience and they have these panelists of like, where, wh- what do you agree? Or what, what do you believe before the debate? Like, do you believe before anybody says anything, do you believe that we can trust mainstream media or that we can't trust yeah. mainstream media? And then how much after the debate did you change? Cause I, it's not like in an hour you're going to be like, Oh yeah, I hated it. Now it's yeah. for it. But like h- how yeah. much of a percentage did you move towards the other side? Right. Mm-hmm. And he got destroyed. I think it was something like 34% of people said Malcolm did better. And, that's yeah. a lot for you know, 66 for the other guy, something like that. He got destroyed publicly. He's getting just all, all the people that don't like him, which is actually, a, you know, anybody that's popular, they're just reaming him. Right. And it was a tough yeah. few weeks and he's getting, Oh, Malcolm thinks he's so smart. He just got destroyed by this guy who said, you know, he's like the, he got destroyed by the fake news guy. It was just like super embarrassing for him. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And like, I love, 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 love how Malcolm responded. This super smart guy who's way smarter than me, his response to losing this debate, instead of going to hide in a corner or saying, like, it was rigged, that guy sucks, he he went to a high school debate class to learn how to debate better and recorded it and put it on his podcast. (laughs) Which, like, part of it's like, yeah, he's making good content, right? But he went to a high school debate class. One of the smartest people in America. One of the most well-known intellectuals in America. And he went to a high school debate class to learn from 16-year-olds. You know what they did? It wasn't just debate class. They listened to it and watched his debate and the teenagers told him what he did wrong and how he could improve. Yeah. And I was like, just the humility of that and kind of like taking in the shame of like he could have hidden, but it, not only did he not hide, he went and got reamed over, <laughs> reamed over by these high school kids. But he wanted to learn and get better because he didn't, he didn't want to be in that situation again. And I was just like, I love this guy so much. Everybody yeah. else is making fun of him. I'm like, he's incredible. It's just That's such a great, a great yeah. step in like humility and wanting mm-hmm. to get better and like embracing your failures and wanting to prevent them in the future. It was incredible. Yeah. No, no, no. That's a great story. Um, and humility and realizing when you're wrong or when you, you have failed is a big part of leadership. Um, a lot of times people think that like to be a good leader, you have to never fail, never look like you fail, but those people are the worst people to work for or work under. Um, those who can't admit they're wrong or try to learn more, you know? So, yeah. So it's been, it's, it's cool. It's made me realize that like, I'm actually pretty blessed in my life that I have enough people that will, uh, be very honest with me (laughs) whenever I make a mistake and uh, and hopefully be able to, to hear it and be like, okay, I'm going to do better. Uh, in the future. I love that. Uh, we talked about it about a month ago, the negative feedback. I work very well off of negative feedback because it makes me want to be better and beat everyone and actually be the biggest Catholic podcaster. In the world. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, that's Father Anthony Scaramucci Sharapa. I'm really enjoying hanging out with all your uncles and cousins watching Sopranos. I really enjoyed hanging out with you today. Thanks for uh, uh, all the eight minutes of show prep that you did. It's the most you've done this year. I yep. really do appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll be back in a month. I'll be back in a week. Say it. Oh, 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 oh,
Thank you all for watching and listening today. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please hit the subscribe button wherever you are watching or listening. And don't miss us next week. Thanks. Bye.